Hey everybody, it's Julian of Flow Graphics here. Uh, sorry if I sound a bit sick. Um, I actually am pretty sick right now. I've got the cold or the flu or something like that. Um, and th that's why this video is a little late as well. Um, I, I was going to wait until I was fully sort of better to make this video, but I, I just I really didn't want to put it off too much longer. I'd rather just get the video out so you all can see it. Um, so yeah, if I sound a little bit sick, sorry about that. But yeah, this is a new episode of Game Dev Diaries. So uh, you would have seen last episode if you saw that. Um, if you didn't, maybe you want to go back and watch that. Um, I basically had <clears throat> a very basic building system, uh, similar to like Rust or Arc, something like that. Um, and it, it wasn't that substantial. All I had was a very simple building system, and that wasn't even really complete either. Um, in this little world I made here with just like a first person controller that could run around and place objects and stuff I've actually done a lot of work um, since the last episode so I've got a lot to show you I'm really excited to show you this because um, I've honestly spent so much time at this every, every, Whenever I get home from work I just have been working on this all night um, And it's been a lot of fun So um, one thing I will say a couple of the stuff is broken at the moment because basically I made it all and then I started with the networking side so I'm just starting to get some of the multiplayer stuff working at the moment um, and then when I started doing the networking uh, I had to change a whole lot of code and change the way I did a lot of things uh, so some stuff is broken um, and the the main thing that's broken at the moment is the building system so I'll go ahead and just play the game a little bit and show you guys um, what I've done it always takes a while to play when you very first open UD, it always takes a while to play the first the first time you play it takes forever, and then after that it's fine. But um yeah, so this is just uh, if if you don't know anything about Unity, uh, when you use the actual inbuilt Unity um, sort of networking thing um, like Unet, uh, it gives you sort of this uh, UI which you can use, and it just sort of plugs in. So um, I'll just do LAN host, and then I'll drop in a player here. Um, so you may notice there's a couple things different. Um, I won't show you the building right now, I'll show you that after, but what I will show you first is if I scroll down on my scroll wheel, uh, we have different weapons. Um, so one thing I added was uh, sort of a working weapon system, um, and then with these weapons, uh, they have animations, I've just made some really uh, sort of basic animations myself. So it sprints, um, I can scope in with this sniper rifle, um, and then I can shoot these enemies. Uh, and then they run towards me when I shoot them, so I'll just, boom, no scope that one. Um, so yeah, so there's full sort of shooting mechanics in the game now. So I can shoot that guy. All the guns have different, I'm just reloading. Um, you can see I have ammo on the bottom right hand corner, so when I shoot, that ammo goes down. This dude's run towards me. Shoot again. I missed. Um, and then if I hit reload, plays the animation, and then the ammo goes back up. And I can swap to, I haven't done any of the animations for this gun yet. That's like a block or something like that. Um, and then I've got an AK. I've done all the, um, the animations for this. We'll go over there. Um, and then I'll reload. And they'll have sort of different damage inputs and all sorts of things I can change. Um, so, yeah, th this is the sort of, you know, I've got all the guns working, which is really exciting. Um, it, was, it was quite hard getting all the stuff working. But like I've said many times, I'm not a programmer, so a lot of the stuff is new to me. I'm trying my hardest. Um, it, it, this is more or less just, this whole project is more or less just me just trying to get an idea from my head and make it something that's playable. Um, although the code and all that might not be the most efficient and might not be the best way to do it. If I can make a project that works and um, represents a game that I want to sort of create well, then that, that's great. It's an awesome prototype. And then if it works out really well and I really, really like it and um, you guys really like it, then I would actually get a bit more involved in, you know, getting some programmers and, and things to do it properly. Um, so yeah, so I've got my guns. Um, I don't think I got, this is that axe I made. Um, I'm just using that for now. Obviously it doesn't really suit the, the style of this. Um, by the way, if, if I haven't said it already, none of the aesthetics of this game at all, anything, just ignore every single visual you see at the moment is just all completely placeholder stuff. It's the stuff I've chucked in. But um, something you may have noticed is a little stone and wood sort of number on the bottom left-hand corner. Um, I totally just stole those icons from Rust to, uh, I'm pretty sure I just Googled wood icon and stone icon and they came up. So yeah. Um, <laughs> but if I go up to this wooden block here and swing my axe, um, uh, you can see that wood going up. Um, and then if I swing my axe on the stone, you can see the stone going up. So how that works is I've tied in the building system, and then this is where it's broken. Um, and I can tell you why it's broken, which is might be a fun little game design sort of uh, insight. And this is to do with the difference uh, between making a single player game and then making a networked sort of multiplayer game. So um, if I drag in my player prefab here, 
um, I originally had all of the building objects. So remember with the old building system, similar to Rust or something like that, there's this sort of ghost, like holographic object that floats in front of you and then that snaps to the positions where you can build. And the way I was actually doing that is I just had all these ghost objects here. They were all in, um, so let's say this is the ghost ceiling. Um, and they were all just in this basic, this group that was just floating in my scene. Um, and then, and then I just had this player hooked up. Uh, so if I click on my player here, um, everything's really messed up. So I go to my hammer, which has my building controller. Um, and then I've got all these object arrays. Um, if you don't know anything about coding or game design, this is going to be really weird for you. Um, but I had basically an array of all my ghost objects. Um, and then what it would sort of do is I would drag this object that's already in the scene um, into this sort of script here and it would basically go for all the objects, turn off, um, turn them all off if I wasn't using them and then whatever one I was selected it would turn that on and then I would be manipulating the position. Um, so all those objects were in the scene sort of just waiting to be used um, and that doesn't work in multiplayer because I can't just have all these invisible objects in the server just sort of waiting to be used by people because I'll have to have a different set of objects for every single person um, and it, it just doesn't work like that. So uh, a much better, also just a more efficient way of doing it is to basically have all these sort of prefabs joined to the player. So every time I um, swap to a ceiling, it basically instantiates or creates this, this ceiling in front of me and then when I go to a new object, it destroys that object and then loops through. So you basically have like this cycle of objects and then it's like recycling through them. Um, and that's all local to your player. Um, it, it, don't worry if that's really hard to understand, but basically what it means is I'm gonna have to redo, uh, it's not too hard, but I just haven't done it yet. So I just have to redo the way I do that. Um, but saying that I actually did a lot on the building system <laughs> since last episode. Um, I, I don't know what I had last episode, but I took out pillars. There's no more pillars in the game. Um, I just thought they were just sort of redundant for the type of gameplay. Um, and then I got a lot more of the foundations stuff worked out. So I added snapping to the... Fa I'll show all of this in the next episode. So I won't say too much now, but I worked a lot on the building system um, and it all pretty much works 100% now. Um, I added in stairs. You can rotate the stairs, the doors. Um, foundations work a bit differently now. So yeah, but I can't really show it to you <laughs> just yet. Um, but basically all I was doing this week is I added in the full, the weapon system, a whole bunch of other stuff. I added in this sort of uh, the UI and the, the resource gathering system and that actually ties to the whole building system. So you need, I think it's 50 stone to create a foundation and then whenever you create a foundation it deducts 50 stone from your little stone counter. So all that works at the moment. Um, I just need to get it all plugged up. So I'll show you that next week. Um, but yeah, I've just been sort of creating all these new things and then trying to get them to work over the network um which has been the main thing i don't know a whole lot about networking so it's all new new news to me um, which is really interesting but that's the whole point of this project is for me to try and learn a whole bunch of new stuff about game design and just to make a really cool game so um yeah i'm really liking how it's coming out so far it, it's definitely oh that's actually going to break because i've got a player in it um it, it's a lot of fun to play just to just to join in and just run around and and like quick scope little um, sort of capsule things. <laughs> it, it's just funny. It, it's like just make Call of Duty. There you go. No scope. I'll trick shot this dude. Bam. I, was, I don't don't even know how I got that. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a lot of fun to sort of run around and shooting things. I'm not sure if I got sound turned on. So sorry if you can hear all these hideous gun sounds. Um, but yeah, so. This is sort of the basic we've got here. I think I'm going to work a lot on art um, this week. So what I'm going to do is basically make a sort of more bit more detailed map that's a bit nicer to look at and just work on some more art things to do with the rendering and the lighting. Um, that's my speciality. Yeah, I'm, an, I'm an artist, so um, I really, really enjoy working all the art, art side of games. Um, though I've been trying to just ignore that up to this point so I can learn as much as possible and get a lot done as far as the game design and programming side. So I might work a little bit on the art and then a little bit on the networking, get that build system working uh, by next week. Uh, but yeah, like always, if you have any sort of um, suggestions or ideas you'd like to throw at me, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear everyone's feedback. 
Um, so yeah, one thing I will actually go through this week is I'm going to go through a little bit of programming. I'm simply going to show you how my build system works um, because I think it might be interesting for a lot of people to do that um, to sort of see. Uh, keeping in mind, this is this is just something that I completely made myself. Um, I didn't follow any tutorials. I didn't follow any guides. I just saw, I played other games and I thought, hmm, maybe they might do it like this. Um, and then I just sort of made it myself. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, I think I've done pretty good. It works. Um, it definitely could be optimized a lot, but the way this whole building works is I've just dragged in, I'll make this window a bit bigger. I've dragged in this sort of foundation here and these are the base blocks, which you sort of build the whole game with all your houses and all that. So when I place a foundation, it just looks like that. It's just this sort of cube. Um, and then when I'm trying to build something, my next foundation, sort of this new one can snap to points on either side of the foundation, um, or I can just snap it to the terrain. So like you can see, when I select this foundation, it's got all these sort of green boxes around it. And these are all sort of invisible colliders. So if I go into this object, I've got all these invisible colliders all around it, which are basically the points in which you would build anything attached to that foundation. So it's got four foundations attached to either side. Uh, it's got stair room for stairs, ceiling, and walls. So what I'm doing is I'm basically shooting out a ray cast. So like I shoot a gun um, in a game, you just basically sending out an invisible point forward. It's like a big line. Everywhere you look, there's this big line that's coming um, coming out. If I actually play the game and put in... I think I actually have a debug for this. So I'll show you something real quick. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Here, here we go. So in my scene view, you can actually see my ray cast. So you see this blue line. This blue line is my line of sight. This is exactly the center point of where I'm hitting. Um, so you can see exactly where the, the center of my screen's hitting. So if I was to fire a gun, so let, let's go up to, whoops. So I've got my gun out. I'm um, actually, oh, I don't think I have to have the, I think I just have the ray cast showing for when, yeah, I have my hammer out. Um, but you can tell when I have my hammer out, I'm looking to show that guy and you can see there's this blue point sort of going through this guy here. So basically what the way the building system works is when this blue point, um, I keep bringing up that, let's just ignore that. <laughs> um, so I can bring up this blue point and whenever this point, see this line here, hits one of these invisible cubes. So right now it's hitting this one. It says, oh, okay, I'm hitting something uh, that's labeled foundation. So if I'm holding, uh, if, if I'm trying to build a foundation, I'm holding a foundation in my hand and it hits one of those points called foundation, then that foundation that I'm trying to place will basically snap to the same position as this invisible foundation. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically how it works for everything. Depending on what build object I'm currently trying to put down, um, it will basically look at the corresponding build objects um, and it will snap to those positions. So if I'm trying to put down a wall um, and I hit one of these wall colliders, uh, I'm trying to put down a wall and then my my one hits this one here, goes, oh, okay, this is where I can build a wall and then it'll snap to that position. So that's basically how it works. Um, all of the objects, well, all the foundations have all these invisible objects um, and then so do the other objects as well. So for example, that's a foundation. Uh, the ceiling is basically the same as a foundation um, because they're sort of, they're the building blocks of, of it all. Um, the walls are just singular. Um, the stairs just have room for extra walls and stairs on top of it. Um, and yeah, so that, that, that's pretty much how the building system sort of works. I could show you a little bit of the code. So let's just go into my, I'll just drag in a player. So I go into my player, I will go into my hammer. Um, and this is basically what I got my building script on this hammer. So this is just, I, I coded all this hundred percent myself from scratch. So, um, it's really messy. I haven't, no one else has looked at it yet. So that's why it looks disgusting and it's really big and long and messy. So yeah. Um, but yeah, this is what coding looks like or scripting. Um, so got a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, <laughs> this is going to be so confusing for people that don't, that don't really know what any of this is. So let's just, I don't know why it won't let me zoom in. Okay, let's just not zoom in. So um, I'll try and explain this quickly and easily for everyone. So this raycast, this line here is basically what creates that blue line that I showed you before. 
Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm doing, I have layer, um, sort of different layers. So if I'm, if I'm shooting out um, a blue line and I come to a, where's the foundation? There's a whole lot of objects here. So let's say, for example, I'm here and I'm trying to put down another foundation. Um, there's these, all these walls in the way. So basically, depending on what object I have out, it turns off, it has like a different layer mask. So when I have a found, when I'm trying to put down a foundation, it only sees, it only sees these colliders here. None of those other ones exist. It just goes straight through them and hits these ones. So basically every time I change the object, it changes all those, um, those layer masks. And depending on what layer mask and what object it's selected, it will go into one of these sort of statements, which has all of its settings. So you can see I've got all the settings for my foundation building. And then you scroll down, I've got all the settings for my wall building, all the settings for my doorway building, and it basically continues like this. I have all the different settings for all the different build objects. So um, the way the foundation works, it basically staying here. If if that invisible line um, touches terrain, then just snap to the terrain position. Or um, if it doesn't have snap to terrain, if it snaps to um, one of those foundation points, then snap to one of those foundation positions. And if it doesn't snap to either of them, it's not hitting anything. It must just be floating in the air. Um, so just let it float in the air and then just change its color to the, the color that means you can't build. Um, and that's pretty much the same as for everything. Um, but besides a few little things, um, with the stairs, I just have a little thing where I basically, I snap its position. I don't do anything with the rotation. And then, um, when you right click the mouse here, um, it adds 90 degrees to the rotation so you can actually rotate the stairs. Um, and then the doors um, are just pretty straightforward. So, and then here, this is basically just actually creating those objects. So once I've snapped it and it says, okay, I can build here, then it goes to either one of these and it says, oh, okay, I've got it. I can put a foundation here. And then if I actually click, it runs this and it basically says build a foundation at that point. Um, and that's sort of how it works. It's a big load of script. So this is, this is basically my entire building system right here. You're looking at it. Um, so it's somewhat compact ish. <laughs> um, it, it, it's pretty long, but it, every building system is going to be like that. When you have a whole bunch of settings and everything's doing different things, it, it's just naturally going to be quite long. Also saying that there's a lot of stuff in here that, um, it's just me trying out things like stuff like this, where I've just sort of commented it out. So you don't really, it, this could be a lot shorter and a lot more concise if I, um, sort of worked on it a bit. Um, but at the moment, everything's just prototyping. Everything's just sort of doing stuff for fun. Um, nothing's too optimized at the moment. I haven't done anything for optimization. So I'm not really worried about that at the moment. But yeah, that's how my sort of building system works in case any of you are interested. Like I said, um, I'm going to be working a bit more on the art side next week. So I'll talk a lot more about art next week. I'll probably talk about sort of lighting up my scenes, my materials, my textures, um, the skybox, um, and a whole lot of stuff like that to do with sort of lighting up game scenes and what I do. Um, hopefully that can be pretty interesting and you'll get to see the building system in action. Um, and hopefully the game will look a bit more pretty. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I won't make any guns or anything like that, but I'll just do some all round sort of, um, things to do with like the actual, the map and the lighting and the weather and the sky and stuff like that. So Hope you enjoy the video. Um, I, I really, really enjoy making these videos. and I, I really enjoy working on this project. I've actually had so much fun working on this project. I've loved it. So um, hopefully you, you all love this because I love it and I'll happily keep making videos to do with this game. Um, I've got another Flow Talks coming out soon in the next few days as well. Uh, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. Um, and always, everybody, have an awesome day. It's been Julian or Flow Graphics here. See ya.